I am Vinny Totorich. Folks, your good intentions have been stolen, but don't worry. I'm here to help you get them back. You may be soft and succulent at the beginning of this process, but hang in there. Before long, you will be lean and mean, guaranteed, just like the woman on the other mic. I'm talking about the beautiful Miss Anna Vocino. You see, Anna, it doesn't sound as good as when I do that, right? <laughs> yeah. You proved your point. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm wanted, dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> well. I'm alive, yeah. Anna. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And we enjoyed it. It was, yeah. it was a good run. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, <laughs> I, knew, I, I know you were sitting there going, where's the song going? Mm. You know, but yeah. Anna it's and I had a good long conversation before the show, and somehow that song came to mind, and there you have it. There you have it. Just Hope that it got everybody in the mood. Yeah. In the mood oh, to talk cool. about some NSNG. Yeah. Some but, fitness. By the way, Anna, I, I, yeah. I want to thank you. Uh, last night. Oh, my God. Last night was so fun. I mentioned it in my little uh, diatribe there while I was um, playing Bon Jovi. Uh, you showed up in the VIP group last night. And, yeah. Uh, everyone. Everyone was just, you know, making. I got a note oh my God. from Steve LaFrance. Yeah. Saying yeah. thanks. And I said, thank you. It was fun to get to connect with everybody. And Misty Willingham and Christina and everybody else who came up and everybody who was chatty chatting down in the chat. By the way, Steve LaFrance had one awesome beard. If yeah. I grow a beard again, I'm growing one of those. You're, you're doing it, full oh, yeah. Mountain Man. You're doing the, La, the LaFrance. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I call the LaFrance. La France. Yeah, we call it La France. It's not yeah. the Tour de France. It's the La France. Steve La France. Mr. Steve La France. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that was really fun because, you know, people ask you all sorts of, first of all, it's just a great accountability group. Like you yeah. could just feel the support and the love and the, you know, holding everyone's feet to the fire by the whole group with you as the fearless leader, of course. But it was just, really cool. And it was uh, great to hear people's questions. Everybody struggles with very yeah. similar things. You know what I mean? It's not nothing so crazy. We're all going through it. Nobody's alone. If you're out there listening right now and you're not in the VIP group, you are not alone. <laughs> what you're doing right now to change your life, you are not alone. Yeah. Oh, by the way, let me tell you why I know the VIP group is good. It's because Don Coddington. It's the billionaire Don Coddington's Friday, five o'clock. He's always in the group. He doesn't talk. He doesn't let us present. Is he really? Yeah, he's always in there. And he's always writing to me and saying, dude, that group is tight. That is, you know, he. Why he, doesn't he text me about it? Because he, he texts me about everything else. Well, he texted me about you by the way. Oh, God. What did he say? He said you need to uh, upgrade your lights <laughs> in your studio. <laughs> upgrade my lights? Yeah, he says, I can see her ring lights in her glasses or something. And it's like, okay. Come on. Yeah. yeah. All right, here, look. Upgrade those lights. The out. lights off. Yeah. Do you and, still see lights on my glasses? Yeah, some kind of light. It's the computer. It's the window. It's the wait, wait put, put, put the light back. Put the ring light back on. All right, now look up a little bit. Oh, there it you, is. you look up, yes, yeah, it goes into one of your eyes. Oh, now when it's When I stare into eyes. the ring light, you can see the ring light in my glasses, Don. Yeah. yeah. Th that, look, that's what I'm telling you. Don Cotton. That's his whole feedback? He, no, his whole feedback is he's so critical about everything. Like he, you know, he's an audiophile, he's a videophile. And his one piece of feedback was, you guys are tight. And by the way, he loved, he goes, does Anna come in every week? And I was like, no, you're, you're there every week. And he goes, that's right. She's because I like it. It's like a show where people get to call in. We do need to do another cooking thing. We do. Yeah. Yeah. People I'll take off the that. glasses. That'll make Don happier. There you go, Don. Are you but if I have to read something, you're all fucked. Yeah. Because she'll be reading like a first grader. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So, Anna, I thought we yeah. would take today, and I, I know you got one article there. that mm -hmm. I have some questions. Of, I have an article. We get questions and it's interesting when I get the questions, because I paste them into a document, and then we get to them when we get to them. Right. The questions, they're all the same. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. 
Okay, I mean that well, if one person's well, asking it, that means there are hundreds, if not thousands of people wondering it. Yeah. Not everybody has the balls to email or write a question. Yeah. You know? Okay. So thank you guys for writing questions. But I, you know, you know that we, or we, we used to joke about, we would have these moments on Twitter where I thought everyone was in cahoots because we'd get the sweet potato question like 10 times in 36 hours. And we were like, oh, did they all, is everybody, does everybody get the sweet potato memo to ask I us that question? Big, I thought big sweet potato was, you know, just yeah, asking like, us at one point. Yeah. Yeah. And the question between the sweet potato and the yam, that used to be a big question. Which by the way, I know we say sweet potatoes, but we mean yams. Yeah, same thing. When you have an actual sweet potato, it's very starchy, almost like a regular potato. Yeah. But a yam is not quite there. The yam is the yellowy one, by the way, you guys. By I the mean, way, the orange one, the orange one, they're, not they're yellow. Still, sweet potatoes still, are yellow. They're still very starchy, both. Yeah. All right, so Anna, yeah. uh, let's start with the article. You told me you had an article. Yeah, I thought this was interesting. This is in the Washington Post. I hope that it lets me view this article because it let me view it on my phone and I saved the link. Um, this is from, don't even start with me, Washington Post. What's, what's going on? They want you okay, to I, can read, I can read it. I can read it. You know how it blocks. Mm -hmm. but also because I'm too cheap to pay for all the media. <laughs> I I, look, I, I'm, I'm not paying for all that crap because most of it is crap anyway. Um, well, the Washington Post has an article that came out on April 3rd that uh, the title of it is, As Obesity Rises, Big Food and Dietitians Push Anti-Diet Advice. And the byline is, General Mills warns of food shaming. Dietitian influencers promote junk foods and discourage weight loss efforts. So this is, you know, we're right, so wait, that, that's the headline. That's the headline. Right, I want to go back and pick apart the headline. Okay. Okay. Read it again. And I'll tell you when to stop. As obesity rises, big food and dietitians push anti-diet advice. They push anti-diet advice. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? Well, I've read the article. All right. So, so, I mean, but, you know, people, we live in a headline world, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So what does that mean to you? <sighs> that they're telling people not to diet. Yeah. Okay. Now, there was more to that. What else? What did you say right behind that? General Mills warns of, quote, food shaming. Dietitian okay. influencers promote junk foods and discourage weight loss efforts. Okay. General Mills discourages food shaming. Mm -hmm. Get ready, Debbie. You're going to have to use this on a little something called Instagram. General Mills discourages food shaming. Now, if that's not the prisoners running the asylum, I don't know what is. I really don't. Oh, wait, let's not shame someone for eating your crappy food? Really, General Mills? Is that where we are? Come on. Stay motivated. Okay. You get what I'm saying, right? It's like... Oh, yeah. Well, all right. Wait till I read you the article. I, oh, I can't wait. But I'm stuck on the headlines. Yeah. All right. So first, General Mills is going, hey, don't food shame people. Don't tell them not to eat starchy carbs because the Vinnies yeah, of the world. Yeah, don't tell them not to eat our delicious cereal that tastes like cardboard. Right. The Vinnies of the world is fucking up your game. And you guys started trying to blame cow farts on the environment and, and, and uh, on the atmosphere and everything else. Right. And that's not working. You could get. A, a, a kid with special needs to go yell at, I dare you to grown ups. You can do all this stuff, right? But the bottom line is, is now you're just coming right out. Now you're really showing your ass, as my grandfather used to say, you're showing your ass. Oh, you can't food shame. You can't shame people for eating our crappy cereal that's basically just sugary dessert for breakfast, right? Right, General Mills? Isn't that what you sell? Are you selling meat? Hmm? Are you selling bacon? Are you selling eggs? Hmm? 
anything? Are you selling uh, fruit and vegetables? No. You're selling processed crap. And now you're telling people you can't food chain. But wait, there's more. Let's get the most fucked up organization in the world behind us, the registered dietitians. Because they've been bought and paid for. First off, they started out of a religious organization that was pushing something called Kellogg's. If you don't believe me, go look this stuff up or watch my first movie. It's entertaining. People tell me it's great. Fatter documentary. Poster right behind me. Kellogg's and the Seventh-day Adventist Church work hand in hand. You know why they created Kellogg? You know why they created dextrinization? And they started serving you sugar and grains for breakfast? So that you wouldn't jerk off. And I'm not making that up. I'm not being crude right now. No, they, that's true. Kellogg decided, they were trying to fight young men try, who wanted to masturbate. Right. Wait, they want to fight their natural masturbate? urges. You know, eating meat makes you more virile? Well, let's find something that makes you less virile. Start, let's figure out dextrinization, which is, is caramelizing grains into sugar, dextrose. Let's put it on a cereal and eat this crap because this will make you less virile, right? That's what they were trying to do. And then that's the same organization, the Seventh-day Adventists. And by the way, I have nothing against their church, religion, or otherwise. I like religions. They, they help people uh, do good things and so on and so forth. But in this case, the Seventh-day Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists, yes, yeah, I said it correct. Mm -hmm. These people started the original Dietitians Association, which is now the Registered Dietitians, the RDA, and these people, these mostly women, or RDAs, that's some men, they walk around spewing stupid shit, things come out of their mouth that make zero sense. If you think I'm making this up, go look into it. Go look into it. I was on a dais uh, several years back at Princeton University. And the woman right down from me, I won't mention the prestigious hospital she was from, but she was the head registered dietitian at a very prestigious hospital in New York. I think we already talked about what hospital she was from. I'm just not going to say it again because, it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Go very back and listen to the old episode yeah. from five years ago. It was more like 10 years ago. But anyway, eight years ago. At any rate. She's telling people, you got to eat sugars and grains, this and that. It's the only way, you know, fat burns in a flame of carbohydrates and all this crazy stuff. And I went, you got to be kidding me. And after the event, she came up to me and I literally apologized. I said, you know, I shouldn't have hit you so hard while we we're on stage. You don't know who I am. I don't know who you are. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but, you know, it just came at me in the wrong way. And she said, no, I would like to learn more of what you I have to say, because you said some things that made sense to me while I was on stage that I had never thought about before. Very few people will walk up to someone and say that after you hand them their ass on stage. Yeah. And her husband came up with her and he was, you know, he was in the health and fitness, but, and they were both interested, right? I introduced her to people like Eric Westman. I introduced her to people like Gary Taubes. I introduced her to people like Georgia E, Dr. Georgia E. I introduced her to a lot of people and told her, go look at these books, go read this, go look at that, go look at the other thing. About a month later, she called me and she said that she was in, a, you know, she didn't use these words, but she was in quite the pickle because now she knows the truth because she didn't just read Eric Westman. She went and looked up articles and she went and looked up studies and everything else. And she goes, I can't believe what I've been teaching. I'm the head dietitian of this hospital. I'm the person who creates the menu for people with heart disease, diabetes, right. Right. and everything. And she goes, I can't unsee this information. By the way, I had to read Nina Teichel's book too. And Nina gives a lot of clues. The cool thing about Big Fat Surprise is Nina gives a lot of clues because she went and looked at the studies. And then this woman went and took the same studies and looked at them. And she couldn't unknow the information. And she was literally telling me that I think I have to quit my job. I can't do this anymore. Now, whether she did or not, or did it right away, or tried to figure something out, who knows? We need you to keep your job and make the change internally. Right. Well, she would get fired. 
she, you know, that was the thing. She goes, if, right. I, if I try to go against this, I will be the one to get fired. And I said, well, I, you yeah. know, you got to stand for something. Or you fall for nothing. You know, that's the way the world works. Well, right? it's interesting that General Mills is under fire. They have been under fire in the gluten-free community because at least as uh, in 2015, gluten-free watchdog did independent tests of Cheerios and Honey Nut Cheerios, and they all had gluten in them, even though they were marked as gluten-free. And yeah. how, how that can happen and like, they just get away with it. And I guess they made some changes. So in 2021, the independent tests didn't show any gluten in uh, regular Cheerios, but then they had it in honey. And, and what it says to me is like, they don't care. No, <laughs> they, they're just, and, and it's crazy because they actually have the money and the resources to test and make sure their products are gluten-free to be labeled as such, you know? So I don't know, but, but in this particular article, it's interesting because to me, it shines a light on a big problem with the internet. And by the way, this is the same internet that you and I use to get good information out there. The big food and the companies have much more resources. And it's sometimes disheartening to Vinny and myself because they have so many resources that they can pay people with way more followers to say whatever their, their line is. Yeah. Don't you can eat cereal. Don't worry. Don't worry about what don't go on a diet. Diet's bad. And, and also too, it's funny because we're also saying, don't go on a diet, change your lifestyle. Yeah. A diet's temporary. A diet's not going to last. So let me read you a little bit of this article. Hold on. Sorry, Don glasses going back on. Um, it talks about, um, it, it starts with a, a human interest story. Jay Roshan struggled to lose weight for years, but she felt as if a burden had lifted when she discovered YouTube influencers advocating healthy at every size, urging her to stop dieting and start listening to her mental hunger. She stopped avoiding favorite foods such as cupcakes and Nutella. Quote, they made me feel like I was safe eating whatever the hell I wanted said Roshan, 51, a video editor in Wausau, Wisconsin. In two months, she regained 50 pounds. As her weight neared 300 pounds, she began to worry about her health. The video that Roshan encountered are part of the anti-diet movement, a social media juggernaut that began as an effort to combat weight stigma and an unhealthy obsession with thinness. But now global food marketers are seeking to cash uh, in on the trend. An unhealthy... Read that again. An unhealthy, an unhealthy obsession with thinness. An unhealthy obsession with thin. Okay. They're trying to make it sound like we're trying to get back to Twiggy and these very unhealthy looking models back in the 1960s when models were paper thin and basically. And again in the 90s when models were. Yeah. You know, they're, they're trying to make they it. They called it heroin like chic in the 90s. Right. Heroin chic because it looked like you were on heroin. Mm -hmm. that, that was the whole idea. That's how thin you looked, yeah. You know, um, I, I had a gay friend that said, I always want to walk around and look like I have a touch of the AIDS, right? Ugh. He said that as a Terrible. joke. Yeah, yeah of course. He, you, know, you know, because you would get thin and gaunt and everything. That's what they're talking about, an unhealthy obsession an unhealthy with thinness. unhealthy obsession yeah. with thinness. That, that is not- That's where disordered eating springs from. That's where- You know, we're talking about lean muscle mass here. We're talking about when, when you have good lean muscle mass, you can fight off almost anything that could be deadly to someone who's morbidly obese. It's in the title, morbidly obese. Do you know what that means, Anna? The obesity is such that it can cause morbidity? Any, any other comorbidity that comes in will kill you. We saw this happen with COVID, right. okay? A lot of the people who died had a comorbidity of obesity, obesity. Now, right. listen, I have a younger brother who's morbidly obese. He got COVID long before there was a, a shot or anything else or whatever. Yeah. He got he got early COVID, right? Yes. And I was like, Oh, my God, this guy's going to be in a body bag. He weighs 340 pounds, he's not going to make it. And his genetics, it worked out just fine for him. He lived. But a lot of people like him died because they, that is the comorbidity. Anything else can come in and kill you, 
right? You, you let's say you end up in a hospital, you get an infection, uh, someone's lean muscle mass, lean body mass, will have a much better chance of living. And when I say much better, I'm not talking five or 10%, a great chance of living through any of this stuff versus someone with, and I got this from my friend, uh, Dr. X, who ran one of the largest hospitals in the United States out in LA. She used to come on the show all the time, the Dr. Yep. X episodes. Yep. And she said, yeah, we, we um, she was the woman that used to buy my book, my, my books, you know, a case at a time from Amazon. And she would just walk into someone's room and just throw it right on their bed and go read this. If they were 350 or 500 pounds. Wow. She, well, didn't care. she goes, I don't, she goes, I, I'm not there trying to make friends. I'm trying to save lives. Right. You know, I got to say something from my personal experience of having a mother who was a sugar addict, who was not overweight, but had zero lean muscle mass. So when she did get, uh, I did an, I ordered an autopsy on my mom and um, it was really brutal to read. And again, this is not, and all I'm saying is that this is the importance to me. What resonates with me is you, you don't even have to be morbidly obese. If you don't have lean muscle mass, you might not have the strength to fight when something important, when you really need the strength to fight. So that just resonates with me. I just want to put that out there, but I know we're talking about the healthy at any size thing. And, and I understand I absolutely understand where it comes from because we are bombarded with media images of people who seem impossibly thin. And if we're not that level of thin, then we're not measuring up. And therefore we draw our own conclusions that we're somehow unlovable, which is not true. Right. And so I understand exactly where it comes from. And the pendulum always swings back the other way. And I feel like this is the beginning of the pendulum swinging back the other way. We have to figure out a way to love ourselves and yet still be okay with being like, okay, here's where I am and here's where I want to be. And I'm going to make a set of goals and change the way that I'm living so that I can get to that goal and not be in denial. You can't be in denial. Right. Right. Okay. Let me read a little more of this here. Here we go, Vin. Just get, get the uh, calm meditation music ready. One company in particular, General Mills, maker of Cocoa Puffs and Lucky Charms cereals, has launched a multi-pronged campaign that capitalizes on the teachings of the anti-diet movement. An investigation by the Washington Post and The Examination, a nonprofit newsroom that covers global public health, has found. General Mills has toured the country touting anti-diet research it claims proves the harms of, quote, food shaming. It has showered giveaways on registered dietitians who promote its cereals online with the hashtag derail the shame and sponsored influencers who promote its sugary snacks. The company has also enlisted a team of lobbyists and pushed back against federal policies that would add health information to food labels. General Mills complies with federal. Whoa, 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 whoa. Re read that little piece again. <laughs> the company has also enlisted a team of lobbyists and pushed back against federal policies that would add health information to food labels. I don't know what the health information is, but. But think, think about that. The, uh, by the way, by the way, I didn't want you to go past that. I heard that and I went, whoa, yep. whoa. This yep. is something I've been yelling about for years. They already allow these bastards to put the food, you know, the, the, the nutrition facts, which there's no facts on the nutrition facts. That's what I'm always telling people. And now they're pushing back. They want to make it even easier for them to lie to people. That's what they're doing. And what right. are they doing? They're putting more lobbyists. Now, as yeah. I always say, if you look at a senator's salary, right, these guys do not make a lot of money, right? But they all leave rich where's the money come from mm. it comes from the biggest unions out there and and right. those unions have the biggest lobbyists who are paying these guys the most amount of money i'm going to name them you have the uh the big food you have big pharma you have the teachers union and you have the nra those are the four biggest lobbyists out there they pay gobs of money to get things passed. That's why I always say to, to everyone, I go, hey, you know, the left, they don't like guns, right? That's right, okay. Obama was in office 
for how long? Eight years. Okay. And uh, Biden's been in office for almost four. That's 12 years. 12 years. How many gun laws have changed? Oh, wait, zero? Zero, you say. Right? Why? Because they're all in cahoots. On the lobbyists everything. are more powerful. Right. So I like yeah. using the, the gun argument because, you know, one side is for it. The other side is completely against it. Right. Yet nothing ever changes when the side that's against it is in office. Think about that when you think about a group like Big Food or Big, or big Pharma. They don't give a fuck. Hey, give us money. We'll push whatever you want us to push through. We will push it through. We'll just keep pushing it through, right? They are very skilled at pushing things through. Yeah, yeah. Nothing ever changes with the gun thing. Um, that tells you that on something more benign where you could get both sides involved, nothing will ever change. These guys are taking bazillions of dollars off of these food companies to vote these things into law, and this will be voted into. And I love the fact that they're, call they're creating a whole new category. This isn't fat shaming anymore. This is food shaming. You see, it, you see how slight it is? You see how small that is? But when you, you go, oh, come on, Vin, you, you're really picking on something tiny. No, 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 no. It's a seed right now. It's tiny, right? It's tiny. Yeah. But it's going to get bigger and bigger. Before long, that acorn is going to become an oak tree. And you watch it. You watch it. You, we're hearing it here for the first time. Go on, Anna. General Mills complies with federal regulations and, quote, works closely with a variety of scientific health, nutrition, and other credentialed experts to ensure we provide accurate evidence-based information, end quote, says spokesperson Andrea Williamson. Online dietitians, many of them backed by food makers, are also building lucrative followings by co-opting anti-diet messages. Anti-diet hashtags such as no bad foods, food freedom, and ditch the diet have proliferated on social media. The post and the examination analyzed more than 6,000 social media posts by 68 registered dietitians with at least 10,000 followers. The analysis showed that roughly 40% of these influencers with a combined reach of more than 9 million followers repeatedly used anti-diet language. Yeah. Most of the influencers who used anti-diet language, language were also paid to promote products from food, beverage, and supplement companies, the analysis found. Mm. The rapid spread of anti-diet messaging and the alliance between some of the country's registered dietitians and the food industry has alarmed some in the public health community. Since the 1980s, the U.S. obesity rate has more than doubled, according to federal data. Nearly half a million Americans die each year as a result of excess body weight, according to estimates in a 2022 How Lancet many? study. A half a million? Mm -hmm. How many people died in COVID? Millions? Mm. Okay, so half a million every year. Is that way more than COVID? I, I would say yes. Oh, is it? I don't know. Did I yeah, mess up yeah. this? I don't know. How many uh, people died in COVID? <laughs> I shouldn't say that. We're losing half that. a million people a year. Since COVID, we've lost 2 million people. COVID came out in, in 20. We're in 2024. If we're losing a half a million people a year, that's 2 million people in the past well, four years since COVID but this started. But is, this is a 2022 Lancet study. Okay, so add another two years and you're going to have what you want or go back two more years. We're losing people. Right. Left, right, and center. And by the way, when I yell about Instagram, Debbie noticed, you know, I went off of Instagram for like two or three months. Mm -hmm. and I didn't post one thing. And guess what? They quit removing my people. But I started putting up posts again. Guess what they're doing now? They're taking more people away every day. And what post did I put up just the other day? Oh, let's see what I put up just the other day, because this has to be a damning post. I'm going to play the post that I put up uh, my last post. It wasn't even me talking. It was one of my guests. You ready, Anna? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Understand that cancer is a mitochondrial metabolic disorder. The, the approaches for cancer management will be far less toxic, uh, much more cost effective, and uh, much more therapeutically beneficial. Um, and um, uh, I think this will be the eventual way we'll manage cancer. It's a me mitochondrial metabolic disease. And if we selectively target 
the two fuels while transitioning the body over to non-fermentable fuels like fatty acids and ketones, I think we're going to see a gradual uh, uh, removal of tumors. Will it cure cancer? I have no clue. Will it keep people alive longer with a higher quality of life? Yes, this is what we're seeing. And many, when we could get those folks to do the right, uh, we're seeing tremendous, uh, much longer term survival with a much higher quality of life. Now, it's Dr. Thomas Seyfried, right? Now, I'm going to read the insights. It's been, uh, it's been viewed over 14,000 times, okay? We yep. got 522 likes. Yeah. Oh, this is the most, okay. 13,000, okay, 3,000 non-followers they showed it to out of 14,000, right? That's the most they've given me in a long time, right? They barely ever show it outside of my reach. Barely ever. Once the field comes oh, I'm to sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean for that to go off again. All right, so you, you see what I'm talking about. It's like they will throttle back Meta, which is Facebook and Instagram, will throttle a guy like me back because I'm saying eat healthy foods. But if you're saying, hey, stop food shaming, eat more crap, eat the stuff by General Mills, you get 90 million people because they're going to get all of these diet bought and paid for dietitians to pull this crap. I hate to get this excited. I, I, I need to calm down. Hold Do on. Man. Let me, let me read this. Let me read this sentence because it, it really sums up what's happening. Go on. Go on. The anti-diet approach essentially shifts accountability for the health crisis away from the food industry for creating ultra processed junk foods laden with food additives, sugar, and artificial sweeteners. Now, I know you and I talk about personal responsibility, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. But also, the food companies run away, and they're so slippery, and they have no... So that's why I say to you guys, we're not going to change the food companies, but what you can do is choose differently with your wallet because yeah. they're after a dollar. And if they're not making money off of the sales of Cheerios anymore they're going to have to figure out another product to sell to stay in business. And I'm not saying we should have a nationwide boycott on Cheerios. I don't care. But what I'm saying is that eventually when people realize they can choose with their wallet, they will. They're going to have to come up with a new business model. And just this morning. But we'll keep I, calling um, them out. Just this morning, I, um, I had to go down to this area in town and I went bright and early because my watch, the one I wear every day, um, the Mudmaster, the the Seiko Mudmaster, the, right. the wife supposed the to be the one that the got the the misty. What's it called? The yeah, condensation. Got water in it. Yeah. And by the way, I, I, all I did was rinsed it off when I was rinsing my hands off. Got water in it. The, the rough and tumble watch. Yeah. Right. So I brought brought it back in for this woman to fix at this jewelry store. It's early. It's misting outside. It's kind of rainy and, and crappy. And I see there's a CVS pharmacy and I got to pee like a racehorse, right? So it's like, all right, I'm going to walk into that CVS, go to the bathroom. I walk in, I walk straight back. Now I'm walking down an aisle mm -hmm. in a drugstore, a CVS. There's cereal on both sides. And then that leads way to cookies. I'm still on the same aisle. I'm not <laughs> going up and down aisles. It leads into cookies. And then there's uh, drinks, uh, Gatorade, Powerade, uh, Pedialyte, and all this stuff, aid, you know, all, all this stuff. And then you end up in the back. And when you get to the back, it's the drug counter. And I went, boy, isn't this a metaphor? Yeah. Isn't this a metaphor? I just walked down this long corridor of nothing but sugar grains and processed junk that ended at a counter that Where has, you can remediate all of it. <laughs> you can remediate all of it by taking a drug that will cause 10 other problems. I went, well, you know, and I wanted to go back with my phone and, and do the thing. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, look at this, folks, and here it is. But there was a, you know, pharmacist standing there, and I would have been going, hey, look at this devil selling these drugs, and I didn't want to do that. Uh, you know, those people don't deserve that. Also, you had to pee. But, but sometimes you when you have to pee, that's more important. Yeah, and it's like, you know what, I got to pee. And by the way, when I got back there, I said, hey, can I use the bathroom? They said, out of order. So I had to go to a coffee shop. <laughs> yeah. 
It didn't even, I had to feel like there was no tomorrow. And they're like, I get to the back and I said, I should have fucking taken a picture of that. I should have done the video. Yeah, you should have just done the video. Oh, I should have done a video. I got back you, there and was in the bathroom anyway. Do you want me to read a little further? Wait, I want to do a break because I can't, I'm, I'm yelling. I didn't out. think we'd spend the whole show on this, but I think that we should because I think Anna, it's we got to keep going. I, I want to hear more. So well, uh, I think that we need to be able to, you know, sift through our social media feeds to what's, What's right. real and what's BS? I mean, everybody's got to make a living. I get it. All right, Anna. Yes. Villa Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. The oh end. God. You know what? What? You can tell Villa Capelli doesn't have a lot of money to pay a bunch of influencers because they're only paying us. I know. The We're the only there. influencers, and we <laughs> barely influence anyone. Well, we do because they're sold out right at the moment. But maybe by the time this episode comes out, because I think they're going to be back in in a couple of weeks, and we're we're banking yeah. one so you could take a trip. Yeah. Um, Villa Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. You have not tasted olive oil until you've tasted this olive oil, and it's got the Puglia pinch, and you're going to want to taste the Puglia pinch just from sheer yeah. curiosity. Tonight, Vinny. Yeah. I have two friends coming over at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. And I am making a caprese salad. They're vegetarians, right? So I'm making mm -hmm. a caprese salad, chock full of Villa Capelli olive oil. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm making pesto from scratch. Mm -hmm. Recipes mm -hmm. on my website with Villa Capelli olive oil. And I am uh, making a an artichoke heart homemade ricotta cheese, like a dip thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to drizzle that Villa Capelli right up. Because you know why? Because oh, vegetarians yeah. are coming over. I need more fat to get full. Hmm. So I am going to gulp down that Villa Capelli and it's going to be so good. I can't wait. Anna? Yeah. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm growing some vegetables this year. Oh, that's right. The yes. I'm growing some. Uh, the transition finocchio. to old Italian, man, is almost finalized. Yeah, it's almost there. I'm growing finocchio. Great. And um, I always grow Baslico, so that's Great. coming. And um, so I'm going to be making some caprese salads where I add the, the finocchio to it. Mm. You got to braise that finocchio in some Villa Capelli. Oh, I, I like to eat it raw. Right it's out so of good garlic. raw. It's so yeah. good raw. But, you know, I'll just take it raw and just put the Villa Capelli on it and just put it in my mouth. Eat like a little boat, a little Villa yeah. Capelli. It, it is what most people miss. Yeah. When you do the finocchio, Put a little salt on it too. People miss that. That in the Villa Capelli. Got to. I can't wait. I, I, I've t I've germinated it. it. It's about that long now. As nice. soon as the last frost, I'm gonna put it in the yard. You know what else I'm growing? Of course, I can't do anything with it. I just want to see if I can grow it. What? Don't Folks, say sugar to, cane. No, Don't no, say no, sugar no, cane. It's even worse than that. Serena oh, and I beets? love garden. No, worse than that. Oh no. <laughs> Corn. I, no, way worse. I'm growing something worse than all of those. What? Wheat? <laughs> Gluten? No, no, way worse. What are you growing? I'm, I'm growing ornamental tobacco. Oh. <laughs> because I live in a place where tobacco started in this country. Yes. And I love serene. We love gardening and the whole thing. And uh, I'm germinating some tobacco. Ornamental tobacco means that this is not the stuff they use in like cigarettes or you're no, not going to be don't. selling your supply to R.J. Reynolds? No, it, it, it makes a beautiful flower on top and oh. that kind of thing. But I want to see what it takes to grow tobacco. Apparently, once you germinate, it grows fairly easily. So <laughs> You're growing you know, cocaine pods? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got some poppy seeds going poppy next seeds. to the tobacco. You're going to brook some heroin. Next to that. No, it's just uh, I want, I'm growing <laughs> ornamental tobacco, which is legal to grow. I, you know, it's, um, I, I guess it's got um, nicotine in it. But I don't think it's the kind anyone smokes. So you could maybe you could just chew on it for a little while. Anyway, Villa Capelli, guys. Yeah. <laughs> the best olive on the planet. Use the discount code Vinny, V I N N I E. You'll get 10% off your order each and every time. You got to do like Vinny and I do and game the system. And here's how you game the system you get enough so that your order qualifies for free shipping even after you've used the discount code Vinny. So about 145 bucks will get you there. You'll be able to get your free shipping and you will love your Villa Capelli olive oil. And if, by the way, if it's not back in stock, put your email address where it says, enter your email address to be notified when we're back in stock. And then follow the direction when you get that email and buy it because it will yeah. sell out again. It will. It will. 
All right, so Anna, yeah, keep okay. going with this article. Um, Amy Cohn, General Mills' senior manager for nutrition and external affairs, promoted the cereals company promoted the cereal company's anti-diet message to a room of registered dietitians at a national food conference this past fall. Cohn denounced the media for, quote, pointing the finger at processed foods, end quote, and making consumers feel ashamed of their choices. They should. <laughs> you can help derail the cycle of shame, Cohn told the dietitians. During the session, Catherine Lawson, a registered dietitian and director of regulatory and scientific affairs at the food giant Nestle, tweeted, people need to feel heard and seen to help break the cycle of shame when it comes to losing weight and eating. What's this woman's name? The Cohn woman? I'm looking her up on Twitter. Amy Cohn, C-O-H-N. All right, so, so Amy is A-M-Y? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so C-O-H-N? Mm-hmm. Professor so, Amy Combe, is she from Michigan? I have no idea. It just says General Mills. Is General Mills in Michigan? Oh, mom of- Kellogg's in Michigan. Wife of Jay, industrial engineer, professor, uh, expertise, healthcare operations. I don't know, I'm not trying to dox anybody right now, so maybe don't read all of her personal things. I'm just reading what, I wonder if this is her. Let me continue reading the article. At least 10 registered dietitians promoted General Mills cereals in TikTok and Instagram posts last year using the slogan, hashtag derail the shame, while tagging the company in their posts. In some posts, dietitians showed, show off personalized Cheerios boxes adorned with their names while they denounce food shaming of ready to eat cereals. In a separate TikTok video published in November, 2023, the self-described anti-diet dietitian, Kara Harbstreet, promoted the company's Big G cereals, which include sugary brands such as Cinnamon Toast Crunch, Cocoa Puffs, and Trix. Quote, I will always advocate for fearlessly nourishing meals, including cereal, end quote. The Kansas City, Missouri dietitian told her followers in the video, which was labeled hashtag sponsored and disclosed that she was working with General Mills because everyone deserves to enjoy food without judgment, especially kids. Harb Street said in an email she was no longer actively partnering with General Mills. So that's the follow-up. I feel to like that I'm one. living in a bizarro world. With this entire article. Now we're talking about food shaming. You can't shame an industrial complex that's putting out crap and, and hurting people. This is more bizarre than when my friend, uh, Dr. Gary, uh, what's his name over in uh, New Zealand? Uh, I mean, uh, Tasmania. Oh, Gosh, uh, Gary, Gary Fetke? Fetke, yeah. Yeah. This is more bizarre than when Gary Fetke started helping people by getting them off processed foods and he didn't have to cut their limbs off from type 2 diabetes. Right. And he literally lost his medical license because he wouldn't shut up about this. And they said, hey, stay in your lane, quit telling people to get healthy, just keep chopping. They literally told this man, stay in your lane, quit giving health advice, just chop limbs off. I'm not making this up, folks. If you Crazy. think I'm, again, go watch Fatter Documentary. You cannot make this stuff up. This actually happened to Gary Fetke, right? They went after him. An entire country went after him for saving people. This is more bizarre than that. Hey, we, you, hey, dietitians are going, hey, we're not interested in you, sick people. We're interested in the fact that someone like a Vinnie Tortorich or a Sean Baker or a, 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 a Ken Berry, or a, a, an Amy, uh, what's an uh, Amy? Uh, mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, Amy, oh, the, oh, you're talking about the, the uh, never mind. Anyway, I broke my role. Eric Westman, <laughs> Nina Tyson, we're shaming, we're shaming the big company, and you guys are going, no, 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 you can't do that. Does that make any sense in any way, shape, or form? Don't hurt that big company's feelings. Don't shame the big company for serving you really bad shit that's going to hurt you. That's the most bizarre thing in the world. I mean, this is crazier than Gary Fetke. It's crazy. And by uh, the way, I hope some influencers get a hold of Eat Happy Kitchen, you know, dill ranch seasoning and make the best ranch dip on the planet and then they all it all i mean i don't have the i don't have general mills bucks to pay a bunch of influencers to push my products i'm just hoping somebody finds it and is like yum 
bet you that'll go good on my Finocchio. It would. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I, I get it that that's the, the, the social media and influencers are the path to serious revenue. I get it. I wonder if anyone ever put um, tobacco leaves fresh in a salad. <laughs> that can't no. possibly be good, right? <laughs> I don't. They, they would have done. I'm it sure someone's that. tried. Oh, that that would have that would it's got to kill you. I think you got to cure that <laughs> stuff and make it brown or something. <laughs> well, I think next week you and I will discuss more questions that we have. I'm 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 really glad that we talked about this. I, I you know, yeah. There, there's information out there. There are a lot of really good food companies doing a lot of good things, by the way. You are you have one and I have one, to name a couple. Yeah. No, there's a, a lot of good people doing a lot of good research. things. It's, it's a lot easier now to research. It's a lot easier now to understand food labels because you've been listening to this podcast, so you can read between the lines on food labels. We've yeah. talked ad nauseum on that. So it's like, yes, unfortunately, the, the big food companies and the government are not going to protect you. You're going to have to make some educated decisions for yourself and your family. But now it's easier than ever to actually get that information. So that's, yeah. uh, thank God for small favors. The internet oh, is oh, good for that. Absolutely. Um, Anna, you want to end the show here? Do you yeah. know, I think, I think we've done it because I can't I take have pesto it to make. I'll be honest. I, I got stuff to do over here. It's it, it's cra- this this subject is driving me nuts. I know, and I just want to get away from it. So, folks, listen. Don't you have to? This is what I'm always saying. You have to advocate for yourself. Advocate for yourself. No one else is going to do it, right? And I talk to people every day on the consults. And they're going, oh, you know, my husband, my wife, this and that, and I can't get, you know, they're doing, my kids eat. Think about that. If if your kids are eating it and it's not good for you, what makes you think it's good for your kids? Think about those things. When I mention that to parents, they get, you know, th- there's always like complete quiet during the consults. They'll go, well, you know, my kids like to eat the goldfish and, and the this and the that, and they bring in the Twizzlers and the whole thing. And, oh, and you mentioned earlier, Nutella. It was like, okay, that stuff got you in trouble. You're letting your kids have it? Right. Just because they're young and their body can really handle it right now to some degree, you think that's a good idea? And I hate to be that guy that's saying this, but come on, folks. If it's not good for you, it's not good for your kids. Right? And if you and, and look, I get it. If a husband calls me and goes, look, I'm on board, but my wife is not, I get it. That's a tough road to hoe. Get your shit together first. And when your wife sees you losing weight, guess what? She's gonna want to lose weight. And then she's gonna start looking at the kids and go, the kids should be healthy. Don't proselytize, lead by example. Be the strong one. A lot of times I hear from the women. You know, they, you know, I'm doing it, but my husband's not. Anna lives in that world. Right. Yeah. And by the way, now he pretty much does eat the way that I eat, but he can eat whatever he wants whenever he's out. Like I'm not gonna like police him or whatever. Right. But it is a relationship and you guys have to fit. We were talking about this last night in the VIP group. If you're in a long term relationship with somebody, you're gonna have to have discussions and some of them might be uncomfortable. Yeah. But definitely talk about it and figure out what works for you guys. And you're so right that once people see that it works, they they want to get on board. And by the way, that's why I make all the food really yummy and eat happy and eat happy too. Because I, I tell people this, and I'm not joking. They will come for your food and they will eat all of your food. Because yeah. your food tastes better than the processed junk. Yeah. Your food is made homemade with real food and love and good ingredients. They will come for your food. They will eat all your food. If you're bringing NSNG food to a party, hide it. They will eat all your food. Or do what I do. Bring enough that let other people enjoy it. You know? Hide it. Hide it. Don't share. Don't ever Don't share. share that shit. Okay, <laughs> folks. Uh, Anna Vocino is, uh, we talked about it earlier in the show, but Anna Vocino has eathappykitchen.com. Go there. Check out everything she has. Whenever Serena's out of town doing her acting stuff and I have to cook for myself, I wouldn't live. I wouldn't be able to live without Eat Happy because I don't really know how to cook, but I know I can sprinkle the stuff on stuff and make it taste like something else. 
that's what I do. And sometimes I make, uh, I call it uh, my, my triple protein crime chili. You know, I just throw a bunch of meat and sausage and everything and eggs, hard boiled eggs into Anna's arrabbiata or the uh, crema. Sometimes I'll mix the two. I'll do half and half one night and then half and half Spicy the next pink. night. Spicy pink. That's what I used to call my girlfriend back in the 80s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spicy pink. So go check all of that out. Anna Vicino, uh, you can check it out at eathappykitchen.com. Uh, go rate and review this podcast. Um, before you go buy any of Anna's books, go to vinnytotteries.com, click through the banner. It puts coal in the fire, gets our train down the track. And as I just said, rate and review this podcast. Uh, but -do -do -do. let's play a little more of um, Bon Jovi. So on behalf of Anna Vocino, my name is Vinny Tortorich. Put life into living and do it with this guy right here. <laughs>